What's up, viewers, subscribers, and agents of light? It's your boy, Light with Supreme Prince, coming at you once again. And we have a special guest, but you can't see her in the camera because she's sitting next to me. Her name is... <laughs> All right. <clears throat> now that we have our formal introduction, and I have great news, people. Um, But before... I proceed. Please remove children from your immediate vicinity. You know these videos are not for children. Now, remember, what was it? Uh, a few months ago, I told y'all I was going to file a lawsuit, right? Against the bank. Or quote unquote, lender. Lender. Right? And I said it in ultimate confidence in the previous video, I would win. Well, people, using the private administrative remedy that I have described for years, I've never stepped the foot in court. I haven't stepped the foot in court. Haven't been in court, haven't got court notices, haven't gotten any, you know, um, adverse pleadings from the contending party, nothing. Silence of the lambs. <laughs> now, what am I saying? In explanation, I was dealing with a financing company. And the reason why I say, pardon the geese. They're going home. But uh, what I was explaining to y'all was this. I want y'all to, for those who don't know, for those who do know, you know. For those who don't, a lender never loans you anything. If you go to a lender, in any capacity, you are saying, I'm willing to give you something for nothing. I'm willing to give you something for nothing. Right? You give them something by inquiring about real property. They'll say, well, let us see. But they need your particulars. They need the social. They need access to the trust. Because their nothing has to come from your something, which is your personal information. They just have a corporate name, which is a shadow. This is how it works with the intricacies of it. They take you on your word, run your information, and make a determination about how they can flip the script to make you the debtor and them the creditor. So they write up these crafty contracts, which they will often hold against you and say, well, you owe us. Some people believe that they owe people. And I said it for years. I don't owe anybody shit. When I say that, that means I owe you nothing. In their convoluted, legalistic, and twisted and devious ways, they will still try to convince you that you do. And over the series, of videos that I've done. I've told you it's a very powerful, very powerful maneuver that you can use. If you say I'm the debtor, prove to me, one, the original signed contract between the lending agency and my live self, and two, 
when did I ever promise to pay you anything? You loaned it to me, which means that once you loan something, all they're doing is floating liens. They're floating liens. See what I'm saying? So they never create anything. But they create a nexus with you via promissory note. Your promise to pay them something. They gave you nothing. So what I'm saying is, what of equal value have you given me for me to obligate to give you something back? That's like a person who says, I loaned you $10, but forget to know that you gave it to them on borrowings. So what you do is basically they're trying to say, okay, well, you did give me 10, but now I want 20. Then they'll turn around and say, if you're late, I want 30. And so forth and so on. It's a 52 fake out, people. What they're doing is gaining interest by your consent. But your consent can only freely be interpreted if indeed, number one, you're completely ignorant to the scheme. See, if you're completely ignorant to the scheme of how they work, they will fuck you over. Because your credit acquired you real property, even though they never gave you anything for it. Right? And the deceptive contracts they write up, they make you believe, see, it's called the land of make-believe, that you have to pay them back. But that's why people say you make a purchase. See, when you make a purchase, it's yours. It's just that the intricacies of the law is all about title and deed. They keep the... the the instructive part to say, it's mine. I loaned it to him. Or I loaned it to her. And this has been in instances of mortgages too. Same shit, different day. But a lot of people get foreclosure and a lot of people get repossessed because they don't know this. See what I'm saying? What they're doing is playing on your ignorance. They never loaned you anything. In order for anything to be valid in commerce, it must be truthful. Truth is sovereign in commerce. It's sovereign. So if you're expressing truth, first off, they would try to call you the debtor. No, I gave you tangible information. You gave me nothing. First off, you didn't even give me a written contract guaranteeing that you would loan me anything. So. That's null and void in and of itself. All they're doing is going through clearing houses and basically saying, we're going to loan your credit back to you with interest. That's all they're doing. That's all they're doing. They're loaning you back your own credit with interest, compound interest, that shouldn't even be attached to a loan. Babe, do we ever step foot in court? Do we ever receive anything in the mail? All we receive is what? Acquiescence and what? Still got the property. <laughs> oh, I still got it. You see what I'm saying? Nah. See, on the public side, on the credit side, they would try to write you off as a negative. But let me tell you something. Irrespective of your credit score, irrespective of your credit score, you can still be credit worthy. Whether you be impacted by the act of forbearance of another or on behalf of particularly what's that? Oh. Now I don't like people saying no while I'm cooking. You feel me? <laughs> but it's an act of forbearance on another. So yeah, on your credit report, it may say one thing. But the reality is, you never lost anything. 
As long as you can be the holder and possessor of what's real and what's imaginary, credit is an imaginary thing. It's imaginary. You can see if you want to be seen. You camera shy? <laughs> credit is an imaginary concept. I don't care what you say, my credit, your credit is always good. What it says in Experian, Equifax, TransUnion, these are all things, first off, to be honest with you, Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion never had written consent to pry into your private life anyway. So the way you fix your credit fast as hell is you sign over in a cover letter, do you have written consent from me to give me information about my score? If so, please return me written and material proof that you do. You never have it. So all you people with bad credit, you don't have bad credit. Because you didn't write these individuals in the first place. They never have your consent. I keep emphasizing, y'all, there's certain laws that you must give written consent. Because, first off, it's a felony to ask for anyone social. Now, since these, this is Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian, these are corporations. These aren't real people. So anyone in commerce that's a corporation must present proof that legally signed by you saying you gave them consent. So what you do is draw up a nice cover letter to all these entities. Same three entities I told you. And you let them know, number one, I'm going to file a complaint federally. And number two, if this is not adjusted within 30 to 45 days, you will be sued. I can guarantee you just as fast as they can tell you your credit is bad, you have a 600. Because they never had your consent. Whenever you apply for anything and they're looking into your personal information, I never gave you consent to do that. How are you going to tell me what my score is and I never gave you consent to even pry into that? The reason being is because they sell information between each, each other. So one score is different. This score is different. This score is different. How are we all getting different readings? <laughs> Why do you have one FICO score? Y'all having proper balances, checks and balances on y'all life and account. I'm telling you. You do not have bad credit if you are the source of it. How can you let a corporation tell you what you can and you can't have? Get it? Have. You have to, you have to write these people. And the only supporting document you need to send, or fax, send certified mail, however you need to send it, is a creditor disclosure statement. Because by Fair Debt Collection and Practices Act, they fall under that too. They fall under that same law. All credit agencies, lenders, banking institutions, and so forth have to provide certain information. Because, to be honest with you, as they say, now you'll get it, neither a borrower or a what? Lender B. Somebody talking about you loaning a person some money, somebody borrowed. This is all in the rules of commerce. This is all in the rules of commerce. So for people who are going through foreclosure, y'all need to do your homework quickly. 
And please don't let him make it to court and you be in the default. People with credit card issues. Same shit. Start writing this stuff. Start sending stuff for them. Start asking questions. All you people with these car notes, y'all spending y'all hard-earned fee out on something y'all already paid for. They're drawing up accounts and receivables on you, and you don't even have the knowledge enough to say whether or not they say, well, thank you for your payment. What? Thank me. I paid already. That's why they call it your house. Until you default. Because the promissory note is the most dangerous thing you could sign. If you don't know the knowledge of what a promissory note is. But if you do, it has no effect on you. That's not a binding agreement. Because in order for a promissory note to be valid, you have to prove to me, is the debt valid? And do I have the accounts and receivables in my possession and was it in the original contract? It will freeze up. They'll never respond. And like I said, consumer laws are put in place to protect you. They're put in place to protect you. My wife is my witness. Did I sweat them folks? Studying, I wasn't studying shit they was talking about. <laughs> studying, what? He's like talking crazy. Yeah, I'm gonna talk crazy. <laughs> Hell yeah, I'm gonna talk crazy. Who oh who? Sit down, all it takes is a couple little minutes of your time, a little bit of mental jogging, put it in an envelope, and guess what you do? You send it off. Because guess what? When you take them to court, they're not going to answer for it. Because they know you know that they know that you know that you know. <laughs> so when they, and whenever, and another thing is, another thing is, I'm going to leave on this note, because my back is sweating in the sludgy chair. <laughs> What I want y'all to know is this. If they ever, ever tell you that they're sending a debt to a collection agency, always remember it's been discharged. You no longer have dispute with the lender. But your next conversation should be with the debt collector. Because now you have concise proof and evidence you never had a signed contract with the debt collector so for people who run from debt collectors don't write inquire and ask who in the fuck gave you my information and where is my written contract with you for you to even be in my business do we have a contract? Do, do we have a contract? So, in asking that simple two questions, why the fuck are you calling me? Because now what you've just done is you basically admitted twice. Someone sold you a debt, which is in your possession. You bought it because you wouldn't be calling me in the first place. And secondly, we have no contract. Boy, talk about two birds with one stone. <laughs> and then you take the debt collector to federal court. And to be continued. I'm just letting y'all know. This is the truth. When I put my heart and my sweat <laughs> with no blood <laughs> into this, I'm living proof. It works. Private administrative practice means you operate on the private side. I told people this is why they have often not understood it. When you operate on the private side, they're like, nah, we ain't getting involved with this. We're going to handle this our way. We're not getting involved with this person. Mm -mm. 
You don't want that smoke because, which I knew the possibility. I ain't gonna lie, that, that two million sounds good though. <laughs> but they weren't coming up over that because where they gonna get it from? Hmm. If 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 a lender owes you an amount in the judgment, where they gonna get it from? Thank you. Which is why they will always appeal a judgment because they don't have it. Either one or two things they can do. Claim bankruptcy. File chapter 13. Or give you a portion in, the, in their investment. They, that's a part of the deal. If they lose. Which is why they always bank on most people to lose in court. Or close. Repossess. Because all they're doing is playing another sucker. Oh, you. It's your house. Girl, this my house. This my house. Oh, I have to go to my house. But you don't. Because if they say foreclosure, bye-bye. <laughs> this ain't over. I was saying, or, or you or, or you will be ducking the repo, man. <laughs> because what they do is they 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 it's it's collateral for them to keep their endeavors going. Which is why if they repossess anything, they're gonna resell it to somebody. And the cycle continues, mm -hmm. which is why, to be honest with you, a lot of melanated people don't own shit. <laughs> My people perish for lack of knowledge. How are you going to sign a contract and not understand what the contract en endeavors? I knew this shit from the jump. I knew it from the jump. If anything go wrong, I'm not going to lose. So all they did was Counted the loss. Shit, he got that. <laughs> yeah, I got that. <laughs> Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> House coming next. <laughs> I'm playing with these people. You gotta stop believing that you gotta work for something. The only thing you need to work for is your understanding and how it works. Not the way the world goes. You know what I'm saying? People be like, I bought my house cash. That don't mean shit. Because all I was doing is going back to the same bank to go get another person kicked out of their shit. And the cycle continues. Stop saying you in debt. I got you, baby. Stop. I'm, my back is drenched. <laughs> stop saying you in debt. Stop saying your credit's bad. And stop saying you owe people. The only thing you owe is you. That's it. And this is another victory. From Lord Lights of Fan Prince and Pirate Toy. <laughs> Simple as that. We ain't playing with them. I just hope to be wealthy enough to be able to enjoy myself enough in the future or the world in. <laughs> I need to go on vacation. I but go on vacation over there. Go ahead. I'm about to sign off. Uh, night, night. It's You're early. It's only six o'clock. <laughs> Holy bedtime. <laughs> but yes, y'all, I'm proving it to y'all once again. Like me. Like me. <laughs> but <laughs> another victory, y'all. Proven. But like I said, I'm going to give it to y'all raw and real. Raw and real. You know? Just give it to y'all raw and real. Won't change. See what I'm saying? Like I tell people all the time, I put my hard work, energy, and effort into this. If you would like to contribute and donate to the channel, please do. It's much appreciated. It's much appreciated. If you want to schedule a consultation with me, whatever, face to face, study materials, and so forth and so on, I'll leave all my information in the video description. And I need to sign off because my back, it's drinks. And I feel like I need to shout. <laughs> but I told y'all, I'm going to keep doing this. I'm going to keep doing it. Straight up. Peace, light, love. Y'all take care. Agents, y'all already know what it is. Fuck it. Signing off.